So let's have a look at UK ecosystems and the different ones they are, or just a quick run through today. So if we just have a look at our key terms here, we so we can we'll go, we're going to look at moorland ecosystems, we can look at heathland ecosystems, we can look at deciduous forests, coniferous forests, wetlands, and ag aquaculture. Get that one right. So let's just have a quick look at your exam starter question. So you can see these are our exam practices that we do. These are nice low tariff questions. We've got a figure we need to use. So you can see we just need for the first one, read off the average highest temperature. So we need to look for what month the highest temperature was in. Identify the type of forest ecosystem that is likely to develop in this climate. So again, we're gonna be looking back here. So we can see there's clearly the temperatures are lower at the beginning of the end of the year, going up to temperatures that we'd usually expect. So this is probably an ecosystem for the UK. So this is a temperate forest, a deciduous woodland. Describe the vegetation of this forest. So you need to describe this, uh, the forest we would have in the UK. Let's crack on with today. So here are our different um, ecosystems that we find in the UK. So if we have a look at the UK, we can see that, you know, for the urban areas, the red, and then we've got industry in the purple. Actually, a surprisingly small amount of the UK is actually covered in towns and cities and with industry, a fair amount with farming, but there is still a lot of areas that are sort of left more remote. So our main ecosystems in the UK are moorlands, heathlands, woodlands, and wetlands. Let's have a quick look at each one. So, moorlands, you can see where they're shaded in on the map there, where they're found in upland areas, and they tend to be quite so, so quite high up, so they haven't been really used for agriculture at all. Um, it's sort of just rough grassland, not very much vegetation at all, and you tend to get heather and birds like grouse there as well. Moving it on. So... Heathland, you again see the heathland dotted around, um, scattered across the UK, more lowland locations, and they are tend to be some of the dry and sandy, some are marshy, so they're a bit more variable depending on the consist uh, conditions. And you can see here that we have a range of different plants and animals we'd find there, such as sand lizards. There you go. You may well have visited an area that looks very much like that. Woodlands. Now, of course, there are lots of different types of woodlands, and um, we have some uh, are called ancient forest, which have more traditional UK uh, woodlands, but then also we have woodland that has been more recently planted. So we can have a look at a few examples. And again, you may well have visited somewhere like this. So we got, uh, if we're describing the pattern of them there, we can see the wetlands are mostly found in the north of the UK in very few areas. And we've got examples up here you can see. These areas uh, have been drained uh, sometimes and used for farming. And again, you can see you know, a fairly diverse uh, ecosystem here, biodiversity at its best. And there you go. Again, you will have seen places like this, I'm sure. So let's have a look at marine ecosystems because marine ecosystems pretty much dominate the planet. Only, you know, that's 70% of the planet is underwater. So of course they're quite uh, dominating for it. Now, we talk about what are offshore and inshore habitats. So offshore habitats are found at a distance from the coastline and obviously inshore are a lot closer. And they, you know, are being used quite a lot at the moment, those inshore areas for producing electricity and very often for things like fishing as well. So what? why do marine ecosystems matter? Why are they important for us? Well, of course, tourism, people like to go to the coastline and creates not so much at the moment, creating lots of jobs and lots of money for the country. Fishing, of course, uh, providing jobs, providing food for the UK. Um, renewable energy, things like the wind turbines, for example, and oil production can be found particularly in the North Sea. So they are a real benefit to the UK. 
So what are people doing to these very important things? Well, of course, first of all, we're overfishing. We're taking far too many fish out of the seas around the UK. So therefore, the uh, population of fish is depleted. Um, we're pumping lots of fertilizers, gets washed off of the farmland and get washed into the sea, which causes eutrophication. Basically, it ends up turning the uh, water just into this green sludge in which nothing can live. Uh, building, of course, we're building an awful lot on the coastline. People like to live near the coastline, so we're destroying habitats that are near to them. Again, some people argue that the wind farms are having a detrimental effect on the animal life, the bird life, the noise. And of course, we are using the seas more and more, particularly for transferring goods because we move things around the world so much now through globalization. So let's have a quick look at a case study of uh, a marine ecosystem up in Scotland. So you can see this is a reef. Now, very often we associate reefs with places like Australia, more tropical areas. But actually, you can get cold water reefs as well. But what you can see, they're almost just as delicate or even more so. 